Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to our last live stream. Uh, the Engage conference has been going on all week. Thank you for joining us. Um, these live streams are a new innovation for our digital conference. Every single day, uh, me alongside other guests from the NCCP and conference reporters have been going live. We've been joining you, giving you highlights and insights into the conference going on and just joining you for a chat. Um, so hello and uh, please do use the chat box. I want thoughts, comments, questions, hopes, dreams. Put them all in the chat box. Let us know how you're feeling after a week of Engage. Or maybe you're just joining us just today for the very first time. I should start off with an introduction as to who I am. So always a bit I forget. Um, I'm Jamie Gallagher, and I'm one of the NCCP associates. And uh, I am hosting a live stream because I'm a bit of a geek. I do love a bit of tech. And uh, it's been nice to invite people onto this virtual stage from my little flat in Glasgow to uh, ask some of the questions that we've not had a chance to uh, put to panelists and reporters during the sessions. The idea behind these live streams is to allow you the opportunity to get a little peek into what's been going on at Engage because there's so many sessions happening. I realize it's difficult, if, even if you were attending all five days, you've not been to all of the sessions. And we wanted to allow you a little peek into what happened at some of the, the sessions today. If you've joined us in the live stream before, then you'll know that we have conference reporters. And these reporters have been going along to the sessions so you don't have to. Um, hopefully you did, but in case you didn't. Uh, so we've got our reporters back again today. And for the first time, we're going to put them all on stage at the same time so they can meet and discuss with each other as well. They're reflections of the week. And people are joining us as well. Hello, Helen. Hello, Dawn. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's nice to see you. Uh, Helen's been joining us all week as well. There's Dom as well. Dom's joining me for another live stream on, on uh, Tuesday night, but that's a different story. That's uh, that's not engagement. That's Star Trek, and we're not here for Star Trek. We're here for engagement. Um, now, engage would not happen if it were not for the NCCP. Obviously, obviously, they run the ship every single year for over a decade now. They have brought the engagement community together in Bristol in December to share, discuss, to laugh, to cry, and to hopefully kind of galvanize the community and move forward. So we've got our special guest to kick us off tonight uh, from the NCCP. If you've been to Engage, you'll know exactly who this person is. Um, but we're going to speak first of all to Paul Manners, co-director of the NCCP. So the person who helps put all this conference together along with an amazing team who I know I've seen backstage they have been working around the clock trying to get the sessions all running smoothly. And uh, we're really lucky to be joined by Paul just to share a few of his thoughts, reflections of the week as a whole. Um, so let's welcome to the virtual stage, Paul Manners, co-director of the NCCP. Hello, Paul. Hello, Jamie, and hello. Hello, everybody. hello, hello. Um, a week of Engage. Um, mm. First of all, how are you feeling? How are you feeling after a week of activity? I think you can probably imagine, actually. I'm relieved, um, very much looking forward to heading down to the fridge uh, for some liquid. Um, I'd usually be in the hotel bar at this point. But yeah, very glad that it's over. Um, very glad that it's it's kind of, it's been a, it feels like a really productive week. Yeah. Excellent. Your, your image is frozen, but we can hear you perfectly well anyway. Um, yes. Glad, glad it's over is a, a funny turn of phrase, but we can sympathize with that. And it's in a, in a good good way. We couldn't sustain, I think, this level of conversation, of thinking, of activity for, for more than a week. Um, one question I have to ask you, so Engage is normally you know, a couple of days in Bristol. Mm -hmm. um, a week, did you feel like actually this is the format that worked? How did you feel the virtual conference went? Yeah, I think that um, when we planned it over the five days, I think it was it was significantly earlier in this year. It was six months ago when I think we weren't all so fatigued with living online. So I think that was a decision that in retrospect, we were really questioning as we moved into the week, whether it was just too much. But what we did try to do, I think, was to, to make it a pick and mix week so that you could pop in and drop into the things that you wanted to. We tried to create quite a few informal networking spaces, a virtual lunch queue, a virtual lunch table, you know, coffee, et cetera. And I think those things, have helped and and the feed you know at, at the end of the day it's what you you know what your delegates say 
isn't it? And I think the feedback has generally been that people have made it work and it's it's been it's been good. And I think it's it's just been extremely tiring for the team to keep up this energy day in, day out. So I think it it was, you know, and I think we that theme of self-care that's come through this conference, we all need to look after each other. And I think, you know, it it takes a toll on people's um well being to work this hard for so long. <laughs> But it's been so wonderful. I think what we get from Engage is is a real sort of taking stock with with a large group of people about what's happening and what's happening in the sector. And I think it's it it really gives you some perspective. And I think for me, I guess the phrase that came into my mind at the end of the final plenary is a phrase my mum used to use where she said, Paul, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. You know, and that was <laughs> you got kind of to pile your plate full of stuff, and you just can't get through it all because you you you're kind of too greedy. And you know, I kind of feel that um, we're dreamers who work in this space. We really big dreamers, and you know, and Stephen's sort of final comments about you know anything is possible. Yes, yeah, we we love that stuff. Um, but and the challenge, you know, is clearly such a challenging time. And our resources are probably going to be less than they were before. So you know, actually that eyes are bigger than our stomach thing came into my head with that. And I think the other thing that final plenary made me think is we try to kind of run a broad church at the NCCP in terms of bringing a lot of different people with a stake in engagement together. So we bring funders like Stephen and policymakers and, and we try to bring senior managers in universities together and we try to obviously bring the pep community that's the core we try to bring in people and welcome people from outside the sector we bring people with really strong and passionate views about engagement together and and it's really hard i think to kind of hold a space where all of those people feel welcome and that they feel that their perspectives are valued and 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 heard and i think that final plenary you felt some of those tensions actually between that mm. diverse range of voices with different stakes in this system. And and I think for us as a centre, it's really important to hold that welcoming space, but it's also hard. And I think as the pressures on us get harder, perhaps that's going to become more difficult and more contested. So there was some tension in that last plenary that I, I want to reflect on. Um, the final thing yeah, I'll, 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 oh, sorry, sorry. is just Bentley's point about hospitality which to me really spoke. I think that is what we try to do as the centre and we all, I think, who care about engagement try to do. Um, and so just that reflecting on how can you be hospitable in an online space. I love that that reflection in the final plenary too. There's a lot to take away. So yes, buzzing, buzzing. Yeah, and I think you know, you've hit on like challenging and, and for me, Engage is the place that challenges need to just be put out on the floor mm -hmm. and we're in the space where we can challenge each other and we can say no i don't agree with that or this is important and that's something that i think engage is useful for because it is the time of the year when we get together to you know confront each other with with challenges i wonder is there i know you've been hosting so many sessions this week so you've not had a chance to maybe delve into as many of the sessions as you, you might have hoped but is there an idea or a message that you felt came through Engage that you felt the engagement community needed to hear? Was there anything that came across particularly strongly you feel in this year's Engage? I think for me, it, it reminded me, I've worked in kind of other sectors that have, have had a kind, of, um, a kind of road to Damascus moment around their engagement. And those have often been triggered by new leaders. So when I was at the BBC, it was the arrival of Greg Dyke who brought a whole different engaged sensibility to the organization and a real focus on audience. And I've worked a lot with the National Trust as an organization. And when their new chief executive, a woman called Fiona Reynolds joined them 12 years ago, she brought a very similar message to the one that Ottoline brought on Tuesday. And I have never heard somebody in that kind of senior policy making role within the research and innovation system talking about sort of engagement, about collaboration, about systemic thinking, about stewardship, about people, about human centered practice. I've never heard that before. So I suppose for me, the takeaway is, is this potentially a paradigm shift? Because I've seen that happen in organizations when you get the right kind of leadership. So I suppose I'm left mm. The sense of of excitement but um you know also realism that that may be not going to happen but it feels interesting at the very least yeah 
So I, I, hopefully a time, a time of change definitely in the engagement community. But as we heard from the early plenary sessions, at time of crisis, it is the opportunity for change as well. So there's challenges ahead, but also opportunities. And, and hopefully some of the conversations that were happening over Engage are going to help crystallize our thinking and move forward together as a, an engagement community. Um, so Paul, thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Uh, the conference has been fantastic. Thank you so much uh, for having me as part of it. And uh, thank you for putting it all together. And the, the comments coming in the chat box, um, incredibly popular. Uh, I think people have loved to engage and it has been different this year, but um, I think people have experienced the feeling of engage uh, just in the same way. So Paul, thank you. thank you very much. See you soon. Bye. Um, so there's our first guest, uh, Paul Manners, and uh, thank you so much for all the comments that, that are coming out. I'm able to bring them up on screen. I can't get rid of the comments on screen, so wh whoever makes the last comment just stays there forever. So keep them coming so that I don't have just one comment on the whole screen uh, for the entire session. So please keep comments coming. There we go. Uh, more comments coming in. Brilliant. Uh, uh, thanks, Ray. Uh, Vary. So step change. Um, now, we're going to pack in as many thoughts and uh, feelings and reflections from Engage as we possibly can. We have three of our conference reporters uh, joining us who are going to come back onto to stage and just share some thoughts. Uh, I'm going to introduce Emma, Emma, Emma McKenna, first of all. And uh, all of our conference reporters were speaking in the, the last plenary session. Um, for me, Emma was talking about giving us ourselves kind of the ability to fail and we will get this wrong and I think we need to get more things wrong and engage and we need to admit that we get things wrong because currently you know I love evaluation if you know me I love evaluation currently all I see is we did fantastically no 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 not everything is perfect in the world of engage we need to talk about the things that are limiting us we need to talk about the days that we are having bad days that we have bad projects because that is the only place that we can learn from uh so on that slightly pessimistic note, I want to welcome, welcome to our virtual stage, uh, first of tonight's guests, uh, Emma McKenna. Hello, Emma. Hi, Jamie. Good to be here. So permission to, to fail, uh, I, am I kind of framing that correctly? Uh, would you say that's something that the engagement community needs to think about? Well, yes, but it's not just permission to fail. It's just acceptance that you do fail. Um, you know, because I don't think anyone ever goes into something saying, well, it's okay if this doesn't, well, sometimes you do, but by and large, you don't go in saying it's okay if this fails, but sometimes it does, or sometimes you have to rescue it from failure by doing things that maybe you're not very comfortable with. You might have to go to your community partner and say, look, I am really sorry about this, but this bit is the best that we can do. When you work with students, you're very aware of this because loads of students are brilliant. Quite a few are, they do something useful. There are always some that something goes drastically wrong and sometimes that's even something beyond their control. So you do kind of get to a point where you do have to go back and say, I'm really sorry, but this is not gonna work the way that we hoped it would work. So it's not, I suppose that, and sometimes you do want to do something that stretches you, that may fail as opposed for me, the underlying thing is honesty and being honest for the reasons for failure and being honest with your partners if something is going a bit pear-shaped that, that you're straight with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and Emma, I'm going to put one question to, to each of the, the reporters today. And I was wondering, is there, over your week of experiencing lots of different sessions, is there one particular message, concept, idea that you think the engagement community needed to hear? Well, actually, I'm, I'm still really processing the engagement at scale. Thing, um, because I think that's what we all want to do. Actually, in the end, I think that's exactly what we all want to do. And it's thinking about how, how far to go with the loss of richness to improve the reach. Um, so to me, that's the bit that I am going to be taking. And it's something I have been thinking about myself, actually, as well, in my own practice. But it's the one thing that I'm probably going to be taking away and really thinking about and thinking about, well, where where can you make the compromises and where is it a stretch too far? Yeah, brilliant, Emma. Um, now, we are just going to come to you just for the, these couple of minutes just now. And I'm going to introduce our next reporter uh, now. But Emma, you're going to be joining us for a kind of panel discussion as we just get to each chat to each other about our, our week at Engage. Uh, so for now, uh, Emma, thank you very much. And I'll see you back on this virtual stage in just a few minutes. Thank you, Emma. 
So the next uh, guest I'm, I'm going to bring up, uh, again, if you've been watching the live streams, which lots of you have, you've come back time and time again, which is really, really nice. Thank you for supporting these. Um, we're going to introduce Akram Khan. Uh, now, now, Akram, I, again, I was listening to, to what he was saying. I thought one incredibly important point was on how we saw some senior managers, some funders, speaking at the Engage conference. And in all honesty, I was kind of nodding along with what they were saying. They were saying things that, you know, I thought and I thought kind of the engagement community had agreed on. But I think Akram hit on a really important point. This was the funders who are now using the language of the public engagement professionals. So we've been talking about these kind of issues for years and years and years, but all of a sudden now it seems that the funders, the people in charge of setting the agendas are now using the same language and same ideas that we are. Um, so welcome to our virtual stage at Akram. Is that is that a fair representation of, of what you were saying, Akram? Yeah. I mean, I think you're, you're absolutely right, Jamie. I think it is a very pivotal and a seismic moment because I think, I mean, whatever's happening in the world around us, it is recalibrating, you know, reigniting our sense of value. What is important to us? You know, what is it that we're doing that's very important? And I think this, this idea of actually embedding diversity, uh, you know, and, and thinking about having different voices within any discussion in how we shape the agenda is very, very critical. Uh, and not just one or two professors or, or this question is more prominent, but actually, all that surrounds it, you know, the the uh, 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 you know, right down to the technicians. We need critically need a, a sort of a, a bolstering, you know. The, I mean, every part of research is very very critical, and not just one aspect of it. And to some degree, I think you know, we have been saying this quite you know for quite some time. Uh, but to hear that language, to hear that way of articulating. Uh, and I think, I mean, I certainly felt that they were being very genuine. I mean, there was a genuine engagement with the idea. Now, the problem I always have is, is that, will that now go into operational? Will it become operational? Will people appreciate and live with that uh, sentiment or, or, that, or that emotional engagement? Have they really recalibrated or is it just for the moment? And, and I mean, I think now it's up to us as well to, to, to actually develop the language, to actually uh, interrogate that uh, idea, that vision that, 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 that these you know, for, for funders have now uh, mm -hmm. and try to so, sort of expand that within, within our own universities and make sure that that's heard loud and clear. Thanks, Akram. And, and I, if I just put the same question as I gave to, to Emma, do you think that over the course of this week, did you hear a message, an idea, a concept that you feel the engagement community is, as a whole needed to hear? I mean, I think the, the, the most powerful one for, for, for me has been that, 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 I mean, security is very, very important and everyone feels fragility in, in, in all our lives in, in different ways. And I think you know, to be unsure about one's place and and position within a within say universities where I you know which I know best about, I think we really need to sort of fight and and develop a voice and show the importance you know in in multiple ways that actually these are critical uh, uh, individuals that are going to be the vital bloodline. For our future, you know, if we are going to be an institution, a civic institution, you know, embedded within place, they are going to help us, you know, come out of this and help the community. I think we need to shout that. We need to shout. We need a little bit more fighting, <laughs> uh, fighting spirit uh, in the engagement community. I, I could, I could get on board with that. Uh, Akram, we'll be bringing you back up onto the virtual stage in just a few minutes. But for now, thank you very much uh, for that insight. Um, now, our, our third reporter that we're going to hear from um, tonight, again, was sharing the reflections in the plenary session. What really stood out to me from Don Smith's contribution was she spoke about going to a community centre and um, seeing some young children drinking energy drinks. And uh, she talked about our hackles raising. And that, I think, is such an important point. It's so 
easy for us to look at communities and think what is wrong and think about politics as well. It's easy to look at the way someone votes in a different way and think, well, they're wrong. And it's so difficult if we're going to be engagement professionals, we need to start off thinking, no, not that they are wrong, but maybe saying, well, why is this happening? And there's so much learning that needs to be done. And I think it's so incredibly challenging to, to not judge people, not to leap to conclusions, not to think that we are right, but just to start from a very neutral standpoint and just say, who are you and why is this existing? Understanding their world before we try and correct them or change anything about them. Um, so, Don, that's what that's what I took away from from your talk. We, am I framing that correctly? Do we need to understand people before we try and introduce our world to them? Yeah, I think we need to think about understanding other people. I think we also need to think about understanding ourselves and really reflecting on our own perspectives, where we're from, where we are, what we think about things and um, how that changes our perspective of other people and our relationships with other people. Um, was it uh, Dawn Ostwick, another great Dawn, um, who said earlier this week that um, in order to learn to learn your my name, I need to learn your name first. I think that was the the phrase she she uh, she used, and um, I, I think there's a lot of truth in that. We need to really think about it's it's not thinking about other people; it's the relationship between us sometimes that I think is tricky. And would you done again same question to uh, as Akram and Emma answered? Would you say that there was a, an idea, a concept, something that you experienced during engage that you feel that it's a message that the engagement community needed to hear? Yeah, I think through the whole week there's been um, one of the the topics which Sophie and Paul introduced us to at the beginning of the week was um, inclusivity. So being inclusive in our practice what that meant in engagement. Um, and that stayed with me through the week in, in various different sessions, thinking, uh, reflecting on that. And I think today, um, Bentley talked about what we hadn't included, what we hadn't talked about. It's always really important with engagement to think about who's not sitting around the table, who's not in the room and who should be. Um, I think one thing that I'd really like to engage this year actually has been that because it's been online, it's been a little bit more inclusive in some ways. And I don't just mean because we're not physically together, but I think everything we do, there's this wonderful little sidebar with the chat going on. And it can be a bit distracting, but actually it's breaking down some of the, the power. Who's got the mic? We've all got the mic because we can all talk. And some of the conversations that I've really enjoyed the most this week and even today have been in the uh, the chat not just what speakers have been saying so I've really liked that so there is inclusivity in so many different like, ways yeah I have seen in, in various uh, sessions people talking about this being their first engaged it's the first time they've been able to join and you know the, the online space has allowed for for some of that uh, and again echoing uh, Bentley's points if, if you've seen the the plenary it was an absolutely fantastic talk challenging us saying you know like so you know he said that we have as a conference reflected on black lives matter have we or did we just mention it um you know it was world's aids day did we mention it no there's so many things that go on that maybe we have the power to actually take action against and we don't we maybe have a little chat about them and then we go back to organizing our tabletop demonstration and some of the big issues are being completely missed um, and we're not understanding people. And so you will be able to catch up on the, the plenary sessions as well. And I would recommend checking out um, Bentley's challenge to the engagement community about what we are ignoring, what we're able to, to gloss over. Um, so thank you very much for that, uh, Don. I'm gonna bring um, uh, Akram and Emma back up onto the, the virtual stage now as well. So uh, let's let's reintroduce um, Emma and, and Akram and just, well, I guess I'm just going to breathe for a second. Uh, it has been a week. It has been a week. Um, thank you to all of you for joining me and guiding me through Engage, because I've been behind the scenes in all the sessions. I'm the one that puts up the slides, plays a little intro music, and I've missed out on a lot of the, the information. And my information has come from you. So thank you very much for sharing all your insights with me. Um, I just want to see how, 
how has it been for you? As, as conference reporters have been to sessions, how was Engage 2020? I think it was great, but I have really missed the soft spaces. You know, and we've tried to recreate them in little bits. Like I had a nice little catch up with a couple of my international colleagues and actually one of my Queen's colleagues, we've been messaging each other on Teams and things like that. But um, I, I've really missed the soft spaces, even though I'm kind of excited about the possibilities that this format offers as well, because I can see much more opportunity for collaborative work and coming out of Engage, which is quite exciting. But I think that we've missed, and maybe for some of us who've been around this area longer, we've missed maybe some of the conversations you have in the corners with people, you know, and the, the conversations where people can be very honest, which I think is very hard in this kind of format. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's, there's something that you would maybe say to someone in person just at the end of a conference, but you wouldn't necessarily be happy typing it in the chat box for all to kind of immortalize uh, in, in that session. Yeah. Thanks, Emma. Yeah. Well, that, that's okay. it for me. It's, uh, I mean, I love being in the presence of somebody and, and following a, you know, a thread of discussion which can lead anywhere to an extent. And, and, and I think I, I really do miss that. And I think we tend to see a lot more. I tend to have joined more places to, or more, talks, you know, I've ten visited more talks and listened to more voices. But the most precious thing I think is talking to people that you haven't met before as well for me. And, and, and there was a bit of that in the breakout sessions that we had, which which were quite nice, I think. But uh but yeah, hopefully next year, you know, we'll we'll be together again. Right. And and Don, how was in Engage for you? Did you did this work for you, this format? Yeah, I think it has worked. Obviously, there are bits that I've missed. Um, I think in terms of uh, as a conference, as conference structure, it's worked really well because I've had more opportunity to reflect. Um, normally to engage, I would feel that every single minute had to be cram filled with seeing people, talking to people because, you know, a lot of money had been spent to get me there. Um, for a few days, whereas being at home, it's it's a little bit easier, perhaps, to to just stop and think about things. Um, so I think that's that's worked really well. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it'll be interesting as well. I think to see what's worked particularly well about this format, to see how they might be able to ca uh, continue with that in the future. I think some aspects I've really liked, um, but I'm mean, online. And then uh, just at the, the end of the, the plenary session uh, there, we had Stephen Hill, um, uh, who was talking a little bit about kind of engagement future. And uh, he said some very provocative phrases, I felt, for, for the, the community. Um, he said that we need to evaluate ruthlessly, that we need to look for where we are having impact. We need to drop um, low impact uh, engagement. Can I just kind of ask just for some thoughts on, on was that what we needed to hear? Is that the right message? How did you feel hearing that? I think it's the kind of thing it's worth thinking about. But I, you're, you know, it, it's almost like um, someone has presented you with something, and you really need to go away and think about it properly. That was that was my feeling, um, and I, I kind of. But I, I do think it's really important to have people on panels asking those kind of tricky, difficult questions. Um, and I, I, I was very interested when he was talking about how research agendas are being shaped. And I thought we do need to bear that in mind that if we want, you know, we all want the public's voice to be heard. That's the thing. We all want the public's voice to be heard. And therefore, what are the things that we can do to try to make sure that that happens? And But then what are the implications for our own practice? That's a very hard mm -hmm. question. Uh, yeah. Akram, evaluating ruthlessly? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it's something that, uh, I mean, there is a storm that's coming, you know, to sort of take that metaphor again. <laughs> that sort of uh, wonderful uh, picture that uh, Paul put up. And I think there, there is another storm that's going to hit the the, the the academy very very soon and and people are gonna have to address these very very basic questions which 
which I think uh, uh, were put forward. And university leaders are going to say or take the tone that, oh, yes, we have to, you know, optimize, rationalize, see what core businesses at the university is teaching and research. Yeah, we need to do this. And we will do these other activities maybe next year. We'll put a hold on them. And, 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 and that is a disaster, potential disaster in the making and in the, in the coming. And I think to some degree, you can't turn off the tap and then turn on the tap, oh, we've got public engagement again. You're going to lose your foundations, your, your lifeblood, the enthusiasm that's taken years of hard work to actually build up to. And I think questions of optimization, I think, Steve, I mean, it was a genuinely good point to, to think about. How are we going to address that when that storm comes? You know, I mean, I, I can feel already certain institutions or certain discussions about, uh, you know, less focus our resources for a year. Let's look at what we do very good, very well, and let's put all our resources while we can in the short period on that, and then we'll do the other stuff later on. Uh, let's do, let's minimize what we do with our public engagement outside, you know, let's just do what we do with our lectures and, you know, get school kids in as well for these activities. Let's do the other activities later on. I mean, they are important, absolutely amazingly important. It's the foundation of our university, but we'll do it later. So I think these questions we really need to start, start to think about. And it worries me because there are unforeseen consequences of what happens. And, you know, I think it could end up in a very bad place as well for us. So I think we have to be weary and we have to be thoughtful about these things. Brilliant. Thanks, Akram. Now, unfortunately, the time has flown away and it is time for us all to, to say goodbye. So this is the final um, Engage event of 2020, but it's not the end of the Engage ideas. It's not the end of the Engage discussion. Um, so thank you very much to all our reporters that we've heard from this week, Akam Khan, Emma McKenna, Don Smith and uh, Bentley Crudgington. Thanks also to Paul and Sophie from the NCCP who have managed to join us for a couple of the sessions um, as well. So just as a, as a wrap up, I'll say goodbye to um, Don, goodbye Emma and goodbye Akram. And finally, a massive thank you to all of you who have tuned in every single day to hear some thoughts um, from Engage. I hope they've been useful for you. Thank you very much for chatting along. Um, it's made these sessions a joy to run. Thank you very much to the NCCP for having me in uh, as well to allow me the chance to interview some reporters and get to know uh, the Engage conference from a slightly different perspective. I do hope that you continue to digest the ideas that you've experienced at Engage and you know bear some things as in mind you know we need to be inclusive we need to listen more we need to get better we need to be allowed to argue we need to be allowed to fail i hope that 2021 brings some fantastically exciting things in the world of engage and i hope i see you all in person if not on a little youtube window like this very very soon thank you very much for joining us and see you again bye bye <laughs>